happy Aloha Friday. Welcome back to Perspectives of Global Justice program. I'm your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. Millions of people across our nation are deeply concerned with Trump administration's political agenda on education, health, criminal justice, immigration and refugee rights, as well as LGBTQI um, native peoples and, human, and women's rights. As a society, we find ourselves in the following paradox. Do we continue to live in a culture where democracy and human rights are blatantly assaulted? Or do we embrace these challenges as invitations to bring our country to the next level of excellency, where justice, equity, peace, and kindness are fostered and respected for all people? Today, we are graced with the presence of Emilia Northhook. North and Emilia is a chair of Women's March Hawaii chapter. And uh, we will converse about how Women's March Hawaii chapter and Women March chapters all over the country are standing together in solidarity with community partners um, and children with the protection of our rights and safety in our health and our families. As African-American writer, feminist, womanist, and civil rights activist Audre Lorde used to say, it is not our differences that divide us. It is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. And on that note, welcome to Perspectives of Global Justice, Emily. Oh, thank you so much, Beatrice. Yes. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. And, um, and I'm happy to be here, um, that I could be f here from Molokai today, too. Well, thank you for taking a flight all the way from Molokai <laughs> to Oahu on a Friday. On a Friday. Uh, to do this, you know, it shows the level of commitment that you have uh, to the organization, to the cause. So before we start, would you mind telling our viewers uh, a little bit of your background? You know, where were you raised? What's your educational background? Oh, sure. Um, I'd love to. Um, well, my name is Amelia Nordhook, and I've lived on Molokai for the past 11 years. I have a background in um, art and art education and actually um, affordable housing and sustainable building. Mm -hmm. I was raised on a Navajo reservation in New Mexico. And before I moved to Hawaii, I was raising my son in Portland, Oregon. Goodness, so. well, welcome to Hawaii. Yeah. So 11 years already goes by quickly, doesn't it? Goes it goes by so fast, I can't yes, believe it. Yes. Where does the time go? I don't know. And no, then here, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> so, how did you get involved with uh, Women's March? Mm. Um, so, I got involved with Women's March because after the election, I was just devastated. And um, I was actually in uh, Japan. I had finished a conference in Fukushima, um, Japan, on um, energy and uh, community-owned power. And it was a very powerful conference because it was in an area that had been um, deeply um, you know, traumatized by the nuclear uh, power plant mm -hmm. um, accident. Excellent. So, um, so it was very powerful to me, and uh, I had really like no sense uh, that Hillary Clinton was not going to win the election. In fact, I was so sure that my birthday is the day after election day. Mm -hmm. And I was going to celebrate in, the, in front of the Golden Buddha in uh, Nippo, Japan. And so I was like, okay, you know, because there's a time difference, right? Mm -hmm. So at that point, I thought, okay, it's great. Well, let's check the, you know, let's see the celebratory United States. And mm -hmm. it was n not anything that I had expected. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it was obvious that um, Trump was going to win the election. And, um, and so after that, it was just... Um, you know, I think with a lot of people that we felt this sense that it had been a really hard election, there had been a lot of ugliness and a lot of misogyny and a lot of anti-everything. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, how do you get over that type of ugliness, right? Exactly. So how do you, it's not just that the person you didn't like won the election, it was like we had shifted a paradigm within our country and we had allowed this really um, you know difficult and challenging time um, we, we had allowed like to behave badly mm -hmm. I think you know on all levels with throughout the the culture 
And so that was, I think that was really harmful. Well, then that was what gave you the, the, the fuel uh, to say, I'm going to join yes. Women's March. And uh, a little bird told me that you, and I know that community leader, actually applied for a grant uh, uh, to go to Women's March in Washington, which I think it also coincided with the same time that Women's March on Oahu and in Hawaii Chita also started to develop their work here. So if you might tell us a little bit sure. about that. Sure. So, so what happened was, so after I came back from Japan and, um, and I heard right away about Teresa Shook, so the woman in Hana who, you know, on election night also felt like we should do something. We, uh, we should pull ourselves together and be powerful. Mm -hmm. Let's march on Washington. And so she put out that call to action. I saw it. I responded to it, like thousands of other people across the world. And um, and so immediately, you know, they set up like the National Women's March on Washington. And so we were part of that very beginning um, con group to um, to coordinate the Hawaii to DC. So at that point, we had no idea that there were going to be sister marches. And as the weeks wore on, we saw that you know the momentum was just growing and growing. And so people were so excited because you know maybe they couldn't go to Washington D.C., but we were going to have sister marches, you know, all over. All over. And, and I, so that was super extraordinary. Uh, I, I must tell you, I was actually at the women's march here on Oahu, and it was quite powerful. Yeah. I think we got over a thousand people. Uh, you know, marching together uh, around the, the the capital. Yeah. And uh, it was a rainy Saturday morning, <laughs> but the sense that I got as a um, concerned citizen and as a first generation immigrant mm -hmm. you know, to this country and as a constituent, it was really empowering. Where you turn uh, despair and concern into something bigger yeah. as a catalyst to really what do we do together mm -hmm. uh, to overturn this and I think at least this, what I left uh, the march with was this sense, sense and sentiment of unity Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so how was it for you to be actually in Washington because it was quite large it was it was so much larger than um, than we had anticipated so mm -hmm. you know we would have weekly calls with the National Women's March and kind of pulling together like how many people were really going to turn up because they had um, buses coming from all the states and I have to also just say um, a huge mahalo to those women who organized in Washington DC and also on a state level too. Um, everybody who worked so hard to pull off this extraordinary um, event. Just, you know, not 1.3 million people in Washington DC alone, but 6 million people Around the world. Around the world, yes. So it was a global uh, movement. It was amazing. Yeah. And it continues to be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some uh, marches are smaller and you know, larger, but I don't think it's really about the size per se, although it was a quite strong message. Right. Uh, it's really about that ongoing commitment uh, to be more civically engaged and to participate in your own community in your own way uh, in matters that you know may speak you know to your heart and through that mm -hmm. process that you find a new family and a new niche to be able to say okay we're gonna get untangled you know from this situation and figure out ways to you know make that happen step right. by step so on that note, do you mind telling our viewers what does Women's March stand for? What's the vision and mission for Women's March? So I I think that um, the Women's March stands for many things, right? So there's the unity principles, they're steadied up for human rights and um, and women's rights and workers' rights and you know and working for I always try to think of it as working for something instead of against something mm -hmm. you know so to me it's you know working in favor of you know making sure that we have you know equal access and you know 
um, all of our um, health care and I mean so many things at this point just like saving the democracy mm -hmm. it's coming down to right. to brass tacks yeah. but I think Women's March Hawaii wants to make sure that um, women and men throughout the state know that you know this is a place where you can come and be engaged mm -hmm. and it's a grassroots movement and we welcome anyone and we need more marchers to make sure that our voices are heard, and not just for the national um, landscape, but for our local landscape. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. like wherever you are, run for school board. Like, you know, run for some office, run for county council, run for city council, run for dog catcher. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, just, you know, please, if you feel passionate about an issue, then go mm -hmm. ahead and, you know, take it. And, and be passionate about it. Absolutely, and I think it's a, such a beautiful template to actually bring people together and also um, a way to unite and collaborate with all the organizations mm -hmm. and to co-sponsor uh, you know, activities that we all like walking towards you know, the same principle. Uh, I, I am very humbled and uh, um, very supportive of Women's March. So as the chair for Amnesty International uh, Hawaii chapter, I have co-sponsored uh, two candlelight vigils in the last month and a half here in Hawaii because those were causes that we already have established mm -hmm. as a global uh, priority. So the first uh, candlelight vigil was with uh, regards to the Syrian gas attack and then the subsequent uh, airstrike that the United States have uh, made in on Syrian uh, territory three days later. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it was so powerful to see uh, people coming together and saying, you know, let's do this and uh, let's let's really brainstorm and let's uh, unite forces and let's figure out ways that um, we have knowledge here locally, but that we can do something locally that can reflect elsewhere. Right. You know, and so I hope that more organizations and more individuals, you know, say. Let's do this together. Let's connect because there's a lot of issues to work on. <laughs> it, it just, yeah, it just seems to be growing. It's like every day, yeah. it's like, it's like, oh, oh, so now there's that one too. Oh boy. So, um, well, let me tell you one thing. I think you um, you mentioned it briefly before, but we are working in partnership. Um, as a huddle, so a huddle is like a smaller group mm -hmm. that um, that like works on you know particular actions, mm -hmm. and so this you can find on the website and you can sign up for a huddle. So mm -hmm. one of our huddles is with um, the Seeds of Peace and Omidyar Fellows, mm -hmm. and I really so. would like to uh, talk a little bit more in mm -hmm. depth about uh, both uh, our partnerships. You know, after we take a little break from. Okay. Uh, our program and uh, um, it, it's just really amazing to see that in such a short period of time uh, how much uh, strength uh, the movement has you know gained so for all of the despair and uh, the hope against hope and uh, the outrage that we feel <laughs> on a daily basis not even on a weekly basis it's every day it's like that assault uh, on you know basic human rights and democracy right. and everything that this nation uh, stands for that i think more and more people are saying uh, wait a minute this is not what we signed up for and this mm -hmm. cannot continue to happen at the speed it's happening and uh so there is hope, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I, I really am a big fan of uh, Seas of Peace, and so we're going to take a quick break, okay. and then uh, we're going to jump right in uh, and talk about that. Okay, great. <laughs>
welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice. This is Via Cantello. And uh, so, Emilia, we were talking about Women's March and the, the beautiful partnerships that uh, have been created also with the Umidia Foundation and Seeds for Peace. So, do you mind telling a little bit more uh, about these partnerships, but also to um, give our viewers a little overview of uh, what Omidia Foundation stands for and uh, also sure. Seeds of Peace? Sure. So, um, so the the Forum of Fellows is um, is kind of like the um, receptor of the the Omidyar Fellowship program, and so as we graduate, then we become like um, part of this leadership, you know, group. And so as we figure out where we want to be and how we want to use our leadership, one of the things that um, three of us looked at when the Women's March um, appeared on the national landscape was how do we, from the state of Hawaii, um, take this, the tools that we have and the skills that we have, um, not only to Washington, D.C., but how do we bring that back? And then how do we work you know, with all of these people mm -hmm. to build a positive, actionable steps? So, so the the march, like you said, was really wonderful, and and it was exactly what we needed to have happened to be hopeful. But after the march, there needs to be a movement, and every day we have to get up and know that we need to um, continue to take action. Mm -hmm. So, and and so for me, that's a positive out of all this. Is there's so much engagement. Um, than before the election, and even though we are like, you know, this is not the way I wanted to see it happen, mm -hmm. but I'm really grateful that so many people have chosen to be engaged at this moment. And yes. so that's something that we as, um, as fellows, as um, the Forum of Fellows, and with um, our mentors and with each other, um, Soma Gandhi and um, Kerry Yurosevich, who um, also co-founded Seeds of Peace. So we decided that Seeds of Peace would be a really beautiful place to take and to kind of build on, you know, the peace building and the action building mm -hmm. through peace. Through peace, which is yeah. wonderful, which is what we need. We need exactly. We need uh, change, much needed change, mm -hmm. but it has to be from a place of deep thought and transformation, not a reactionary, right. you know, uh, response and, and place from a, uh, you know, place of uh, heart and anger, which anger in itself is no bad per se is mm -hmm. what to do with it. It can right. be an amazing fuel for, you know, big changes. We talked about that we and we talked about, about it, yeah. you know, the Dalai Lama saying, mm -hmm. hey, you know, you notice what you notice. Yes, it's very upsetting some of the things that's happening because it's causing so much suffering and unnecessary pain on so many people who, you know, don't deserve period. Right. And how do we relieve that suffering and that burden and that pain? And where does our responsibility, I think, as fellow human beings, mm -hmm. you know, you know, stand in that process, you know, to make sure that uh, that happens. And so, whether you feel directly impacted or or not, or even in a place of privilege where it may not impact you personally, right. I think it's everyone's issue. And uh, and caring is a primary characteristic of human beings. Uh, you know, we're seeing a big sense of distress and need right now, and so tell us a little bit about uh, uh, yeah. Seeds of Peace uh, and uh, you know how that framework uh, of the organization interwovens with Women's March. So, um, well, we're trying to figure that out, okay. and uh, and, <laughs> that's that's, and so that's one of the things that we're working, you know, on is like we don't have the answer, mm -hmm. and but together we can find the answer, and yes. we can find the the pathway in which to make it, you know this work for us all, mm -hmm. and um, and you know like your strength will be someplace else than where my strength is, mm -hmm. and I think that's really important to you know figure out where it is that you feel you know most confident and most valued mm -hmm. and to bring that value in and so that's what we try to do with the seeds of peace framework mm -hmm. is to you know create 
Um, and we're still talking about like well, how to build an action plan and how what to build it around. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so um, and how to you know primarily work with youth um, yes. in the state of Hawaii and and maybe set forward a model of how to work with youth around the world nationally mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and globally because that's yeah. what's really important is yeah. to make sure that we um, right now with all of the images that our youth are seeing and you know it has to be it's a scary time for us imagine being a child in this world right now True, it's very difficult. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, I am very hopeful because I think uh, our youth, depending on uh, what they're exposed to, whether it's bad things but also um, different realities, mm -hmm. you know, to counteract what they're seeing, that they react much quicker and they recover <laughs> much quicker <laughs> than we do as adults. And uh, so I think that planting those seeds right now of not only uh, two sides of the you know conversation, mm -hmm. uh, critical thinking, uh, empathy, uh, coming from a place of conflict transformation and not necessarily fuel into the fire in which we you know constantly on that right now right. you know I, i'm very hopeful for our youth for everyone really no. I, i think in many ways what's happening um, can be a catalyst for uh, resurrection and rebirth mm -hmm. of our society you know where we can help reshape and and create new narratives um that can you know have much deeper meaning and and roots than what we're currently having um, and so that's really nice to know that you have, uh, you know, Women's March template with Omidia Foundation and uh, leadership and also Seeds of Peace together mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, craft, uh, the, you know, right. this, this movement, you know, going forward. So what kind of uh, activities Women's March have I uh, working with right now so in, in the, in the <laughs> recent past? <laughs> so, so a lot. And so you have to keep in mind, like, the Seeds of Peace is just one huddle. one huddle. So, right, so we have a lot of different partnerships because we have coordinators throughout the state of Hawaii. And, of course, because Oahu happens to be where the federal Federal buildings are where the legislature is. You know, there's a lot going on here mm -hmm. with other groups like J20 and like Amnesty International, and you know, all of these other organizations that can help us. Um, you know, bring different toolkits. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, Indivisible is another one too. And so mm -hmm. I want to make sure that people know that there's that there's many many choices. Mm -hmm. um, if if Women's March is not you know primarily where you want to be there are so many other ways to be engaged mm -hmm. and so to please reach out to other other groups absolutely and so you know as the chair for for Women's March here in Hawaii what, and, and I know you can't pick and choose and say okay I really like this you know trend and better than others but what really speaks to your heart right now like mm -hmm. for the next three months like uh, you know aside from coordinating this big orchestra you know that is um, women's march and all of the organizers right. what are the things that you know in your heart right now you say i'm going to devote the extra hour day <laughs> on my 26 hour day already <laughs> <laughs> so that i'm to say i'm, I'm, I'm gonna do this you know, right where's where your heart at so so my heart and i want to be clear that i'm the chair of the 501c4 oh, yeah. So, okay. um, so which is primarily um, the 501c3 uh, chairs Sherry Capania, mm -hmm. and so the, we have two separate boards. Mm -hmm. um, so the 501c4 board is going to be primarily concerned with raising money to help people run for office. Okay. So that is where my heart is. Is I want to help people on a very grassroots level, like run for office, and you know, women especially. Mm -hmm feel confident about yeah. doing that and we're looking for ways of bringing some tools 
that have worked in other states to um, to help women um, prepare for office and campaign and you know start to feel that it's a possibility because that's you know we need to start like on that state yeah. level even even below that like mm -hmm. I said you know school board run for school board yes you know yeah. wherever you neighborhood feel board, neighborhood yes, board yes. and um, and all of those very mm -hmm. um, they seem right now that that is the best way to affect change mm -hmm. because sometimes on a national level we may not be able to get there until 2018 mm -hmm. but that would be then my other passion is to make sure that in 2018 we make sure that more people are registered to vote more women are registered to vote right. more youth are registered to vote right. and that we turn out to vote and that we change the the landscape mm -hmm. of the House and the Senate. That's so that would be like my biggest wish, dream, passion and right now. That's powerful change. Mm -hmm. Just watches people. We're here. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> We're here. We're watching. So we we have a couple of pictures. Uh, mm. Look at this, Sirata de Kepuro. Uh, uh, do you want? <laughs> Yeah, so that was um, so that was the beginning of the march. Uh, we met at Staten and Green, and so we had these beautiful signs that one of our coordinators, um, uh, Michael and Jennifer, put together, and they had them waiting for us in Washington D.C., which was fantastic. So people just ran outside. So there we are, Maisie Hirono and Brian Schatz. Um, showed up to the very the beginning march. of the march oh, and wonderful. marched with us. I love There's, them both. They're so, <laughs> they're we're so, so well represented we, you know, with our senators. Yeah, know. our senators yeah. are pretty great. Yeah. I just heard Maisie the other day at a town hall meeting and she was really wonderful, mm -hmm. you know, unscripted and she's very, um, Oh, she's just so committed mm -hmm. to women's rights and equal yes, rights yes. and human rights and I, I mean she's immigration. Just, uh, yeah. I mean, she really is a remarkable leader and so yeah. accessible to mm -hmm. to her constituents. You know, That's, yeah. you know, it's so wonderful. So we have very few minutes left okay. for our program. It goes really quickly. Um, I always like to ask my guests uh, if there's anything else you would like to. Uh, emphasize uh, to our viewers, you know, in these last minutes that we have, uh, and I and I also hope that this is the first of many times that you and all the members of Women's March come here uh, to, you know, Think Tech Hawaii, and let us know how <laughs> things are going, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. And how can people join? Mm -hmm. Also, you know, the the cause and the movement. Sure. Well, I think that that's how I'd like to end. Is that um, now uh, with the Women's March National had ten actions in a hundred days, and so we're past the hundred days. And in honor of Mother's Day, um, they're going to start the Summer of Resistance. If you go to the Women's March um, Washington dot com, you can get the toolkit and you can see what the next um, three months are planned and, and how you could maybe be engaged on that, you know, within that discussion. And so I would definitely encourage people to do that and also to reach out to uh, Women's March Hawaii and you know opt into our email list and please opt into, into seeds of peace as well and any other organization that you feel um, drawn to yeah. to you know be engaged as a citizen or you know as a member of this um, community absolutely so i want to thank you so much from my heart you know for being here and for your wonderful leadership and for that drive you know that uh, fueled you to say I'm going to not only do something about it personally but I'm going to share uh, my strength and what I have learned on how to be a leader with other leaders who are as strong or who are emerging leaders because I feel in many ways that um, the only difference that we have uh, between people who have not 
reached that level of leadership yet are opportunities and mm -hmm. this is a wonderful template you know for it that is. to happen it's a wonderful template and there are many people just waiting to hold you up so if you feel yes. um passionate and you feel called to run for office reach out to us absolutely okay well on that note uh, thank you so very much and uh well, my friends, uh, this concludes our you know, lovely program on Perspectives of Global Justice uh, for this Friday. Um, I wish a happy Mother's Day to every mother in our community and around the globe. And uh, you know, I think Women's Day is every day, so just remember that. <laughs> uh, honor your mother, honor your roots, honor the earth honor yourself and uh, united we can uh, we hope